Hello brothers and sisters, Brother Frank here. I uh, just want to bring a word to you, but usually make videos, but uh, every now and again. The Lord spoke to me and gave me Titus. I was to read uh, Titus and that he would speak to me from it. And so I read Titus and I, I really, I don't get anything really, and, you know, in the sense of what is the Lord specifically trying to say to me. And so, I, you know, I prayed to the Lord last night and I asked him to show me, teach me, reveal to me, you know, what he wanted to say to me and and, and obviously share it with others. Because I think that was the purpose of, of him wanting to give me the word. And so I, I read it, I read it again. And in the very first verse, the very first verse, it says, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness and that you know you've heard and i'm sure it's happened to you where something jumps out at you you've heard that phrase so this these words acknowledging of the truth is what jumped out at me and arrested me so to speak and, and made me stop in my tracks and, and see what the lord was trying to say to me through this uh, these particular words acknowledging of the truth and so this word acknowledge we know this truth is fundamentally important. It's foundationally important uh, to who we are in Christ. In fact, the Lord is the way, the truth, and the life. This is one of the foundational aspects of who Christ is, who God is. He's truth itself. That's how important this fundamental aspect is to us as brothers and sisters in Christ. It's so important to us. How many saints down through the ages have died because of their acknowledgement of truth? They're standing upon the truth, their inability to deny the truth that is A in them and that uh, B is, this is simply the truth that they can't deny. Christ is the truth, the, the word is the truth. The things that God teaches us is in the word is the truth uh, and it's a, you know, it's a lamp into our feet. It's foundational to who we are in Christ. And so this acknowledging of the truth I think specifically why the Lord is laying it on my heart is because we live in a day and age of lies. Now, you can make the argument that we've always lived in a day and age of lies, and that's true. But there's a culmination of the ages here. I believe we're beginning uh, to walk out the culmination of the ages, to, to walk into the ladder of the latter days. And so uh, everything is culminating, is peaking. And that would include lies. And we see it, don't we? We see that. And in one sense, truth seems to be lying broken in the street. The foundations seem to be destroyed. What can the righteous do? And so that's specifically our challenge in our day and age is this acknowledging of the truth. Now, what does that mean, acknowledging the truth? Does that simply mean, say, something like, hey, I believe in the Son of God. I believe that Jesus is the Christ. I believe that Jesus came to save my sins. That's a part of the truth, but the truth itself is something much more fundamental. That really what I just said is a mental ascent to an abstract truth. You can hold the truth in unrighteousness. Isn't that right, brothers and sisters? You can hold these things. You can believe these things in unrighteous vessels. And I would argue that America, amongst other places, is awash with people who hold these truths and unrighteousness and so this acknowledging of the truth is this, the word itself acknowledge here in Titus uh, is the word epi, epinosis epinosis gnosis meaning knowledge epi meaning precise the word itself means like a recognition it's another translation it's a recognition of the truth what does that mean in this context this this precise recognition of the truth so the word acknowledge, if you were, if you hadn't met somebody for a while and you said, hey, guess who I met yesterday? And I, I said hello to them and somebody might say, did they acknowledge you? Did they say hello back? Was there, was, was there a two-way situation there? Was this this relationship with, the, with, this, with this knowledge that I know you and I acknowledge you? It's important to acknowledge people, isn't it? In your life, rather than to ignore them. And so the truths in our life, they have to be uh, acknowledged. 
It has, they have to be seen. They have to be seen in us. It's, it's, it's not words coming out of our mouth. We have to live the truth that we're talking about. So between us living the truth that we're talking about and the truth itself is, is a marriage of the two. And so, for instance, I remember when my wife, uh, my wife and her two brothers uh, moved from America to my hometown of Greenock, Scotland, uh, when they were just young. I think my wife was eight when she moved there. And it was a culture shock, as you can imagine, from uh, Kansas, suburban Kansas, uh, to a housing scheme in Greenock, in Scotland. Pretty tough one, too. And so when she moved there and they went to school, I remember her telling me the first time that she knew her, her grandpa was, he drank a lot. He was an alcoholic. I'm not sure she would even know what that was at that point. She'd never been around any, but you know, if you grew up in Scotland, <laughs> you know alcoholics. So the first time she came out of school, her and her brothers, they were walking down a hill and then there's at the bottom of this hill, there's another hill which is where they lived and they had to walk straight up. But at the bottom of this hill, there was a grandpa lying on the ground, passed out drunk, lying on the grass. And of course, all the other kids who had just got out of school as well were passing and they're horrified. They were absolutely horrified that their grandpa's lying on the ground. I mean, this is a, come on, get up, grandpa. They're pulling at him. And of course, the kids, all the other street smart kids, they, they know exactly why he's lying on the ground. He's drunk just passed out drunk on the street just lying there but they don't know that and so they're they're trying to they're pulling and hauling and trying to get him up and the kids begin to mock and jeer them and, and make fun of them and this happened more than once but at some point my wife told me that she learned to walk around her grandpa and not even acknowledge that she knew him because it, a it was seemed like it was a futile, futile uh, endeavor to try and get him up small girl and B she wanted to avoid being mocked and ridiculed so she knew that was a grandpa but she kept on walking which I'm sure I would have done myself actually at that age and so she refused to acknowledge her grandpa who was lying there kept on walking to avoid the ridicule to avoid the mocking you can understand it on a certain level tragic on another level all the way around it's tragic grandpa eventually died younger than he should have, as did many members of her family and mine, for that purpose. So how does that relate to today? How does that relate to acknowledging of the, an acknowledgement of the truth, acknowledging the truth in your life? You know, truth can be, uh, to the world, it can be uh, very embarrassing to hold the truths of God in a modern day world, whether it's believing in Genesis, Adam and Eve, which I do, uh, creation, which I do, seven day creation, literalist, I believe all of that. But in a modern day world, some of those truths are embarrassing to people who claim the name of Jesus. And then it goes beyond that in the, in the day and age which we're living now, with all the, the, the social issues, uh, whether whatever it is, whether it's homosexuality, transgenderism, uh, even everything's political now. You've got, you know, the the virus and various things like that and so more and more and more we see denominations fall we see churches fall because they will not acknowledge the truth they're too embarrassed to acknowledge the truth and there's a relationship between us and truth truth being Jesus truth being the Word of God truth being the foundation of the earth we have a relationship with that it's not it's not a it's not a theological construct. It's a living, breathing thing inside of us. It's the Lord Jesus Christ himself who is coming to take up residence in our heart. And so we, we, we live and move and have our being in him. As it says in the scriptures, that's who we are. It's no longer we that live, but it's Christ that lives in us. You know, And so if you have an intimate relationship with Jesus, you could never pass the truth by. You could never walk past it on the street. You're never going to be ashamed of the living God. For if you were ashamed of the living God, now didn't the Lord say he would be ashamed of, of you before his Father in heaven? 
And it's coming down to that, brothers and sisters, this acknowledging of the truth. It's coming down to the fact that this is our, this is our fundamental role in life. It's how we hold the truth in righteousness, as opposed to holding the truth in unrighteousness. And I would just like to challenge you today. Do you, do you, what do you think you do? Do you think you hold the truth in righteousness? Or are you oftentimes ashamed of the truth? So therefore you're holding the truth in unrighteousness. You're in this relationship between yourself and truth. You're being unfaithful. You're being unfaithful to the truth when you ignore it in favor of another. And what I mean by that is that you will deny it in order to please the world. So in that sense, in a biblical sense, you're running after other lovers. You're looking for their approval. Their approval means more to you than the approval of the living God. Otherwise, you would never deny the truth of God in the first place. That would be your fundamental passion, this acknowledging of the truth. And while a lot of that is verbal, the ability to defend the gospel, uh, stand up for the gospel in that sense, give a defense of the gospel, it's, it's a relatively small part of it. Because you could do all these things and still be living on unrighteousness. It's your very life itself. Uh, there's an acknowledgement of truth. We should be a living witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. People should see precisely when they look at us, uh, living instruments of Christ himself. They should see Christ when they look at us. So the challenge again is, is that what people see, brothers and sisters, when they look at you, when they look at me? Do people see Christ? Do people see Christ in me? The hope of glory, my hope of eternity? Going on to the next verse, this, this, this hope that we have in eternity, this, this hope, this wellspring that bursts forth from us with, that's full of mercy and grace and forgiveness. Is that what people see when they see us? Because that's a denial of the truth as well. You can be gung-ho for the truth. You can shout it from the rooftops. You can think you're being a soldier in the army of the Lord, but if your life, it doesn't match up with the truth that you convey then there's a fundamental problem there's a fundamental problem in our lives and I think we this generation will be uniquely challenged on does does these two aspects do, do they match up do, do what we say do what we apparently hold dear does it match up with the life that we live in this world as a witness, as a witness to the world? Because it's really not our words that's a witness to the world, that's a part of it. It's our life itself It's a witness to the world. And so if we're ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, then he'll be ashamed of us before his Father in heaven. And not just the, the, the parts of the gospel that you particularly like, the, the aspects of God loves everybody. It's actually quite easy to share. It's easy to say that to the world, that part of it. And it's true, of course, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever. And so that is fundamentally true. But there's other aspects to the gospel. In Romans chapter 1, the gospel of Paul says that he's not ashamed of the gospel of, of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. And I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. There's a power. There's a power in the gospel itself. So that would be my encouragement today to, to, to have a have a look inside inside your own heart in, in in relation to this verse or these words acknowledging of the truth. Do you acknowledge the truth? Do people recognize the truth in you? Before you ever open your mouth, do people recognize the truth in you? And so that would be a challenge for you and a challenge for me moving forward to be a representative of Christ in an ever-darkening world. God bless you, brothers and sisters.